Hey there guys, it's Joe with Sloppy Joe Shred Check, and today we are going to be talking about my personal approach on how I write guitar solos. Well, welcome back to the Shred Shack. Anyways, like I was saying before, my name is Joe. It's very, very nice to have you. Now, if you haven't seen my face before, definitely click subscribe, smash that bell notification, and follow me in all of the upcoming videos. Now, if you have seen me before, welcome back to the Shred Shack, my friend. Now, the reason I'm making this video is because of my friend Jeff and my friend Kyle. Now, Jeff, I'm gonna refer to as King for the rest of this video. Not for a weird reason, but that's because that's his actual name. If you come to the Houghton, Michigan area and you say King, everybody will know exactly who you're talking about. So, um, it's just his nickname. Don't know why, it just is. We don't ask. But it is what it is. Now, um, King and Kyle have a wonderful band called Weathered and Wise. Now guys, I got links down in the description box below. Definitely go take a look at them. I got their band camp there. I got their socials. Uh, they are a really, really fun metalcore band. And now metalcore is obviously full of mediocrity. You know, it's not my favorite genre in the world, but the boys in Weathered and Wise, they definitely are good and they definitely are breaking the mold in a lot of different areas. So guys, you know, feel free to chuck them a few bucks on Bandcamp or whatever, or buy some merch or something, or follow them on Instagram, whatever you want to do. But they're a b good bunch of guys. All of my, you know, every member of that band is a friend of mine, especially you, Kevin. Now, from what I understand, uh, they were re-recording one of their first songs they wrote, and I jokingly slid into King's DMs and was like, hey, by the way, if you guys ever want me to do a guitar solo on any of your tracks, you know, let me know, I'll, I'll like, come lay something down. And he's just like, well, why don't you just do this one? <laughs> so I did. Now, this is the fifth columnist, I believe, um, one of their first songs they wrote. Um, now. It's very, very simple, you know, and he kind of sent me over the little snippet of the area that he wanted me to do, and I will play that right here. You know, and I asked him what kind of style he wants, you know, and he was just whatever, whatever you want to put on top of it, you know. So luckily, like, I've been playing, you know, lead guitar for a while. Am I the best in the world? Absolutely not. I never will be. But I will tell you this, I do like a sassy guitar solo. Um, and right here, I'm going to kind of just walk you through my mental process as I was listening to this. So we're going to cut to a little short clip of the track again. So it definitely hits hard and it's got that pulse and it's got like kind of like these, you know, like a breakdown-y type, you know, just beats to it, you know, um, and it definitely makes you want to bounce. So when I heard that, I kind of felt a little bit, it sounds weird because it's so tight, but I wanted something really loose on top of it, you know, um, I wanted something almost like a party metal kind of thing. I wanted it to kind of like break out of the seriousness and just have like these wow, wow, you know, like these wild bends and stuff. So like now I'm going to put my guitar on here. Now what I'll do with a guitar solo is I will just put that track on that I'm listening to and I will just go for it. Like I'm just gonna, you know, 
put that thing on repeat, figure out licks that work, right? Because I want that guitar solo to really fit. And if it just, you know, like a blues dad guitar solo isn't gonna sound good in there, like maybe the notes will work, but it's not gonna sound good. Now, it's something, you know, it's just kinda. <laughs> humming that low C because they play in drop C and I could have done like a like a just a normal like Aeolian pentatonic thing maybe which I did in the solo that I wrote for the song maybe a little bit but like I you could write a whole guitar, really melodic guitar solo doing something like that right so you know but I decided because I knew I know a little bit of theory not much you know since it was hum you know since it was humming that low you know, that low C and not changing off of that note, that really opened up a lot of avenues for me. So what I decided to do, you know, I was I, I messed around with like... Doing maybe some, you know, Lydia... But that didn't sound right. I kind of wanted it to sound a little bit more mean, but like I was saying before, I wanted it to sound maybe more party metal. So what I did, and because I know a lot of pentatonic tricks, if I use the Dorian mode, the second mode of the major scale, um, I, it, it kind of gives it a weird feeling. So like, instead of like something like this, It gives me something more like this. So it's got that minor vibe, but it's got that major like, ooh, like a little bit of a spicy thing to it. You know, so that was cool. I was like, okay. I'm like, I already got the flavor, right? So the next thing that I did is I maybe wanted to incorporate a little bit of like, like arpeggio stuff. So how do you introduce this riff? You know, cause you have Kyle just screaming that lyric and then it cuts and I'll show that right here. So what do you do with that? Right? Um, so what I did is I introduced a few notes of the solo while Kyle was still reciting some of his lyrics. And I just wanted to have it like to be an introduction. Now, a lot of guitar players would be like, and just bend right up to the C. What I wanted to do is something a little bit different. So I knew that, you know, my notes, let's just use the top three strings here. My notes using the three string Dorian mode are gonna be, And in that, I know that there's a major arpeggio hiding right here. So then I go, and I love that. So like a major arpeggio would actually just be this, but I really like the sound of this. You know, like if you were to do a normal like three string arpeggio, it'd be more like this. You know, <laughs> excuse me screwing up, but I liked the sound of. So if I put both of those things together, it's a really fun little intro lick, right? Awesome. Okay, so we got a great start there. Like, and it's just a nice little fun, like, let's cut from the seriousness. And guess what, guys? We're going to be drinking champagne and doing spin kicks in the mosh pit. You know? Like... So what's my next thought process of going through the solo, right? You know, I got the little intro lick. You know, and I already got like that weird... Got that almost bend and then I bend right up to it. And then I know because of music theory, you know, like, that my G Aeolian, or if you wanted to do a minor pentatonic, is gonna be right up. 
or the, the Aeolian or the, the minor pentatonic is gonna be in the key of G. So guess what? I got all those notes that I already know really, really well, right? Um, so what I did is after that little intro lick, you know, I just run through the Aeolian mode real quick in G. Another big bend, you know, kind of making that dissonant. And then here's where those little dissonant notes come in, right? So I go. So if I were to do the whole thing a little bit slow. All right, so that sounds super 80s, you know, like, and I like, I like 80s shred, you know, like, and you can hear it in my playing. So what's my next thought process after that? Now I'm gonna go back to the C Dorian, and after the... If I can play my own freaking guitar solo. And it kind of sounds a little bit like there's a whammy bar there, but I'm just... Putting a tiny bit of tr uh, vibrato on those. So then I go back to the C Dorian, and then I just go. A nice little lick, nice sassy bend, so. And a lot of my, you know, guitar playing is all about bends. So like, I love a really good vibrato and I love a nice, I hate sounding like a boomer. Boomer. You know, I love a slow melodic bend. All right. So what I do is I do this like. And then I do a little run after that. And now this is like a little trick that I made up when I was, you know, 18. And what I do is I take the C Dorian mode. And I know that a minor pentatonic can fit on top of that if I wanted to. So, but I can also do the same little shape here on the G. You know, so G minor pentatonic and C minor pentatonic technically work in this case. So I end up doing, and it sounds really fun, but I do, I tap a bunch of notes here. So. You know, and, or I could do that tapping the whole scale, but I just use this top line here of the, of the G minor pentatonic. So I could just run my finger right across and it sounds really cool. So. You know, and it's just like a really easy, fun shred lick, you know, and it takes a little bit of work to get used to it, but I've been doing this for, I'm what, I'm 30 now. So that lick I've had in my arsenal for 12 years, you know, so like I just hurry up and whip through that. All right, so I whipped through all those little notes there. All right, then how do you end this solo? And I wanted to end it on like a big Van Halen bend because let's be honest, you know, Eddie Van Halen died recently and I kind of wanted to pay a little bit of, uh, I, I guess, homage to him. I guess that would be the word I would use. Um, you know, maybe a little tip of the hat to one of my favorite, favorite, favorite guitar players of all time. Um, and so what I did, I did some tapping and some really wild bends. So the next part after the... So what I do is this really quick bend. So then I bend up. So I kind of get close to the note in the first try. Then I hit this fret right here, which would be what? The 18th fret, so. Which is an Eddie Van Halen move. So bend up, almost hit that C note. Grab this note up here, which is not the C, and kind of like, okay, your ears torn away from the C again. You start releasing the bend. 
So, again, it's... And then end finally on the C. So it kind of gives that little bit of relief, right? So... Like, easy lick, but you can't... It's a hard lick to, like, just kind of put somewhere, you know? So it's they got that... And that's the whole solo right there. I mean, it was a very short section, but it allowed me to kind of do some weird stuff with it because that low C was just humming in the background, right? But uh, I have a video that King shot of the uh, of the thing. So by the way, thank you, King, for the fantastic footage in there that we were in his little studio. Um, or maybe I'll put a few clips in of, you know, us kind of goofing around and stuff. But King's got... Hell of a studio, guys. Um, on that note, um, this is my first time using these Nolly plugins, and we use Nolly plugins for everything. Uh, and they sounded really good. Like, I've never used a plugin on a computer before, and they sound awesome. I'm gonna let you know that right now, guys. That that those DSP plugin or that that Nolly stuff, I guess, is just absolutely fantastic 10 out of 10 highly recommend if you don't have the money for an amplifier or you don't have the ability to um you know play super super loud these plugins sound amazing and you can get some like really really great tones you can record records with these things man like that's wild to me because that wasn't something you could do 10 years ago you know like well, when I was 20, you know, there were some plugins, but they sounded like hot garbage, you know, like, and all this digital stuff is really coming around. Like, I am a believer in digital now after hearing a lot of these tones. But let's cut to the little clippy guy. Probably. Yeah, I want that attack. Why is that? There we go. I feel better. Yeah. I must have bumped the high V up. Well, that one's a little bit more like warm. Yeah. I think I prefer that one. Might be I just like it. It's a little bit more brighter. Yeah. Yeah, I like Less that. Feedback, already. more feedback, um, more in the mix. There's less feedback, so. Pause here. Uh, yeah. And boom, that's the guitar solo. So guys, uh, I had a ton of fun. Hopefully I kind of explained maybe a little bit as like my thought process as to how I break down a solo. Maybe I didn't, maybe I didn't explain it well enough, but it, it's kind of how I approach things. You know, like I kind of approach things from like a, a rock guitar standpoint, you know? But then I use that three note per string theory to, um, to kind of open up a few more avenues. And then I kind of use, you know, a few arpeggios to open it up even a little bit more. So, you know, guys, if you keep learning guitar and you keep working on new techniques and you, but here's the important thing, incorporate that into your playing you are going to be a really, really fun guitar player to listen to. But every time you learn a new technique, try to incorporate it into your improvisation. You know, um, that's my secret for the day, you know. And maybe this video didn't explain garbage. I don't know. But, you know, 
that's how I write a guitar solo. But anyways, if you like what you're seeing here, guys, definitely click subscribe, smash that bell notification, and follow me in all the upcoming videos. Now, you can always hit me up on Facebook. Just pretend this is a keyboard and type it into your browser, you turkey. Or you can hit me up on Instagram at sloppy joes underscore shred shack. But anyways, I'm Joe. I talked about how I approach guitar solos. I kind of hope maybe it helps you somehow. I don't know. It wasn't really informative. I didn't really teach anything, but I broke down my mental process as to how I write something, you know, and um, I kind of hope that maybe that translated through in the video. But anyways, guys, later. Okay.